Today, I'm going to show you six ways that you can start investing in real estate. Wanna know what they are? Well, stay tuned, because we're getting into it right now. Hey, what's up everybody? Dietrich Williams, Realtor with Compass Baldwin Hills, California, and welcome back to another edition of Info On The Go, the show where I give tips, tricks, and insight on how to buy, sell, or invest in real estate the easy way. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you're notified every time I upload new content to YouTube. So number one, house hacking. You may have heard this before, but just in case you haven't, this is what house hacking is. Essentially, you're gonna go out and buy a multifamily property, either a duplex, a triplex, or a fourplex. You're going to live in one and rent out the other units. Now, here's where this is so beneficial for you. When you go to a lender, let's say you're gonna buy a fourplex. You're gonna live in one, tenants in the other three. The lender will take the rents from the three tenant occupied properties, apply a percentage, usually it's 60%, sometimes it's more, they'll apply that toward your income. That will give you the ability to qualify for more house than you normally would be able to afford. Additionally, if this is um, something that you're looking into just in terms of getting into the market, again, this is a great way because it gets you one, a home, and it provides you cash flows each and every month. One of the other benefits to this is that at some point you can take out what's called a home equity line of credit. Essentially, you're borrowing against the equity of the house. You can take that money out and then go purchase maybe a single family house or the house that you really wanted or really in the neighborhood that you wanted to go into. You can use that money and go purchase that house. Well, guess what? Now you have a vacancy in the spot that you just left you can rent that out as well. So that's adding to your income each and every month. The second strategy is fix and flip. Now, house flipping is a strategy that investors use where they typically find a distressed property, purchase it for below market value, do some rehabbing on it, or major, maybe, maybe even a major rehab on it, and then they're gonna put it back on the market for a substantially higher price because they're looking to get a great financial gain. So you've seen this in shows like Flipping 101 and even good bones. Now, before you decide to become a fix and flip investor, there are some things that you really want to pay attention to because you need to know these. Number one, financing. So if you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth or you got tons of cash, you don't need to worry, you can cover it. But if you're like most people, you're going to need to use OPP, other people's pennies, because the lenders are going to require you to put 20% or more down to purchase the property. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to go to what's called a hard money or a private lender. A hard money loan is a loan that's acquired through a hard asset. In this case, the hard asset would be the real estate you're getting ready to purchase. Now, the hard money lender is going to use that asset and its value to determine how much they're gonna lend you and the interest rate they're gonna charge you. Now, keep in mind, hard money loans usually have a significantly higher interest rate than you can find on the market. So for instance, right now, interest rates may be hovering around three, 3.5. Hard money loans may start at 8% and can go up to like 10 to 15%. So you just wanna keep that in mind if you're going to look for a hard money loan. A private money loan usually comes from a private institution or a person. Now, the terms are gonna vary from lender to lender. Um, and usually these interest rates are a little bit higher, but the money comes quickly, which is why they are attractive to investors of fix and flip, because they're gonna use this money for a short period of time. Usually it's about 12 months. Second, you need to know the 70% rule. What is that? Well, there's something called the ARV, after repair value. You can typically get that from your real estate agent. So if you're going to purchase a property, you wanna take 70% of that value minus whatever the rehab costs. That amount is the max amount you should pay for that property. So here's an example. Let's say you're gonna purchase a quadruplex that has an ARV of $350,000. And to rehab it, it's gonna cost another 50,000. So you're gonna take 70% of that 350,000, which is 245,000, subtract out the repair values of 50,000, and that leaves you with what? 195,000 that's the maximum price you would pay or you should pay for that particular quadruplex. Third, 
you need to build a team. So if you're versed in real estate, construction, or design, those are gonna be skills that come in handy. But if you're not, you're gonna to need to find professionals who know those things and can guide you and help you through the process of completing your flip. Now I told you, you're probably gonna need a lender, so that's gonna be somebody that needs to be on your team. But you're also gonna need a real estate agent, an insurance agent. You're gonna need contractors who know how to get the work done. You may need an architect or somebody that is a land surveyor. All of these people are gonna help you to make sure that you complete your project and that the work gets done professionally. But you gotta remember, hire the right people. So if you need if you need referrals, you need to go ask people who have done this before or people who have done renovations if they have people that they would refer to you to help build your team. Number four is risk. Now, as with any investment, flipping real estate can be risky. You have the potential to lose your entire investment and who wants to do that? That's why all of these things that I mentioned before, you're gonna wanna make sure that they are A-OK. -okay. Now, sometimes things happen. There are, subs there are situations that happen that are not in your control, right? And that can have an effect on the cost of your flip. So for instance, there may if you're in a place where it snows or it rains a lot, increment weather can stop the rehab process, which costs you both time and money. Remember, if you have a hard money loan, you're paying a higher interest rate, and every day that goes by that this project is not completed is costing you money. That's what we call overhead, right? So it's costing you money. You just wanna keep that in mind. Additionally, sometimes when you're doing flips, you may leave appliances or certain things inside of the home because you don't wanna transfer it back and forth all the time, so you just leave them in the home. Well, there are oftentimes thieves that come in and steal things out of the home. So you don't want to leave in brand new appliances and then walk in one day and everything is gone. You're gonna to wanna to ensure that that stuff stays safe. So you may want to put an alarm or you may want to hire a house sitter to watch over everything until um, your contractors come and can put everything in. Again, hire the right team. That's partially why you need an insurance agent. If you go into this with the right plan, the right team, and you've reviewed the numbers and you know them, House flipping can really be a viable option, especially if you wanna create vast amounts of capital really, really quickly. Just know that you're probably not going to be an overnight success at this and you're gonna make many mistakes when you first jump into it. Trust me, it's probably bound to happen. If you do hit a home run on your first tryout, that's awesome. But more times than not, you're going to see that there are hiccups and things that you were not prepared for and sometimes it can get a little stressful. So if you are somebody that is more risk averse, this might not be the strategy for you, right? So if, if the thought of losing money makes you sick to your stomach, do not become a house flipper. The second strategy is called buy and hold. And particularly what I'm gonna talk about is the BRRRR method. No, I don't mean freezing. BRRRR is an acronym. It stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. This strategy is very similar to house flipping. However, instead of putting the house on the market to sell, you're gonna put the house on the market to lease. Now the same principles in house flipping also apply to this buy and hold strategy. You need to know the ARV rule and use it. Additionally, you need to know and think about what you want your net income to be each and every month. So your net income is your total income, minus your total expenses. So that's the amount of money you left, have left over after you receive your rents and pay off every bill that you have. That should be substantial enough to make this a worthwhile investment. You need to know what that number is and stick to it. As one of my mentors would say, you need to have a purpose behind every property. Meaning, why are you purchasing this property? What is it going to pay for? And that's why you wanna make sure that you know what that net income number is because that income is going to be what you use to supplement or pay off other bills and expenses in your personal life. Once you've purchased the property, you wanna rehab with the goal of getting the highest value possible and the highest rents possible for that particular property. For example, can you convert a two bedroom into a three bedroom? This could add some cash flow and potentially increase the value of the property, but it's gonna depend on where the property is located, right? So the rents that you can dictate are gonna be determined by location. If the property is distressed, it may need extensive work and you're gonna to need to budget for that because you're making this rehab to create structural 
um, safety and aesthetic improvements to the property to get it ready for the renters. After the property has been rehabbed, it's time to fill it with tenants. Now, because you bought a great property, you've done an incredible job rehabbing it, finding great tenants should not be a problem. If you've never screened for prospective tenants before, my advice to you is hire a property manager. Now, yes, this is gonna come in and eat some of your cost up, but trust me, a great property manager is worth their weight in salt. Why? Because they're gonna handle the day-to-day -day activities that you probably don't wanna handle, especially if you work a nine to five. For example, who wants a tenant calling them at two or three a.m. to say, hey, I have a busted water heater. You need to come fix it. Well, what if your job starts at seven o'clock? Mm, that just disrupted your sleep and now you gotta go deal with that. And if you're in a place like where I came from before I moved to Cali, like Minnesota, I don't wanna wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning because it's freezing outside. So again, hiring a property manager is something that I would highly advise you do. As I said before, the tenant's rent should cover or exceed your monthly expenses. So this includes your debt service or your mortgage and any expenses related to the property. If it doesn't, you're going to be operating in the red for some time, either until you can refinance, which I'll talk about later, or you raise the rent. Now that second option might not be viable depending on the tenant laws in the location that you're in. So you just wanna keep that in mind and that's why again, Knowing the numbers is very important. Now that you've rehabbed the property, you found some great tenants who are giving you great rent each and every month, the next part of the strategy is to refinance into a more conventional mortgage. Now, chances are you had a hard money loan or a private lender. So why do you wanna refinance? Well, this goes back to what I said previously. When you, ref when you have a hard money loan or a private lender, your interest rates are usually a lot higher. Well, you wanna refinance that loan into a more conventional loan so you can take advantage of lower interest rates, thus lowering your mortgage payment. That's gonna help you tremendously because it's going to increase your cash flow each and every month. Additionally, you're going to want to pull out the money that you invested by doing a cash out refi. Now here's how this works. Let's use the same examples from the fix and flip strategy. The ARV for the quadruplex was 350,000 and the rehab cost was 50,000. Using the 70% ARV rule, the max purchase price was 195,000. But let's assume that you bought it for 165,000. Take the ARV, 350,000, multiply it by 70%, that's 245,000. Subtract out the purchase price plus the repairs. So 165,000 plus 50,000, that's 215,000. Now what you're going to do is take that 245,000, subtract out the 215,000, that's $30,000. That is the equity funds available to cash out. Now let's assume that each unit in the quadruplex is renting out for $1,500. That's $6,000 per month in total income. And let's say you refinance that $165,000 loan at 4% interest, which would make your mortgage somewhere around maybe $1,200. And then let's further assume that you have expenses of $1,000. So 6,000 minus 1,200 minus 1,000 equals $3,800 per month in net cash flow. Now I'm simplifying this just a bit because you're going to have other expenses like down payment and closing costs, right? So I didn't necessarily talk about those, but the, again, that's why learning this process and learning the numbers is going to be really important. But if you are looking at creating short-term residual income and building long-term wealth, this strategy is one that you highly want to look into. There are a few risks when it comes with the birth strategy, and I'm only going to get into a couple of them. One of those risks would be that if you can't refinance out to pay off that old loan and your rents don't cover the mortgage, you are going to be operating in the red again, and that's going to hurt really, really bad. So you just want to make sure that you understand the numbers and understand the rents that you can control for that particular area. So make sure that not only do you know the numbers, but you understand the area as well, because that's gonna dictate what your rents could be, right? So again, know the numbers, know the area, but that's why you need the team. Yeah, I went back to that one. 
These next three strategies, I'm not gonna deep dive on. I just want you to understand them and it's a way for you to get into real estate without actually having to get your hands dirty on the day to days with fixing and flipping and house hacking. So number four is REITs, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. Now, a REIT is to real estate what a mutual fund is to stocks. And essentially what a REIT is, is a group of properties or developments that are generating mortgages. And how you get paid from the REIT is those underlying mortgages or rental incomes if the property's already been completed. Now, this allows you to get into real estate with, again, without having to get your hands dirty per se, but gives you an opportunity to gain wealth from investing in those REITs. Now, you're probably not gonna make a ton of money off of this unless you're putting a ton of money into this. But again, it's a way that you can just get into the game and get you some residual income when those REITs pay out. Number five is crowdfunding. Now, this has emerged as a way for investors or everyday lay people to just invest and get higher than average returns. And crowdfunding typically works like this. There are specific sites that are out there that allow you to do this, right? So you, with a group of people who you may know or not know, are all pulling your money together to go purchase a property. And you're going to share in the equity and the gain and the income that that property produces. Sounds pretty good, right? That's another way for you to invest. So sort of similar to a REIT, just in terms of there's a pool of people who are investing, but in this instance, you are actually physically buying the building. Number six is wholesaling. Now wholesaling is you go out, you find an incredibly great deal, you write a contract to acquire that deal, and then you sell that contract to another person. I won't really get into wholesaling like that because there are laws that are changing, so I'm not gonna really dig in deep, but I essentially just wanna tell you kind of how it works. So let's go, you know, I like examples. So here's an example for you. So I'm a local investor, maybe I'm flipping houses, whatever. I find a distressed property and the owner wants to sell it. And I say, hey, I'll buy this property from you for $500,000. They agree. But the property may be worth more than that, depending on, on the market, right? So they agree to sell it to me for 500,000. I in turn go out and find a buyer and offer to sell it to them. But I'm going to sell it to them for $515,000. So a couple of weeks later, I close on the deal for $515,000. The seller of the original property gets their $500,000. The new buyer gets the property and I get the difference of $15,000. That's not bad for a few weeks worth of work, now is it? Yeah, you can see that that's pretty good. But again, state <laughs> laws vary and they are changing even right now as I am releasing this video. So you wanna look into whatever state that you're into, understand what those laws are around wholesaling. So for instance, in California, which is where I'm at, you can wholesale or what we call doing something on assignment but you have to specify that within the contract. So if the seller knows in this instance that I'm gonna turn around and sell that $500,000 property for 515, they may not like that. That's the risk that you run, right? Again, you just wanna find out what the local laws are in your area to determine whether you can do it and then how to kind of mitigate some of the risk that comes around it. Now it's a very low cost, low barrier to entry and the rewards could be great. But again, laws changing. You have to specify sometimes that that's what you're doing and it could cost you the deal. Sometimes these deals blow up. But again, a way to get into real estate investing and create large sums of capital really, really quickly so that you can go out and fund other real estate strategies that I mentioned earlier. Now, if you are particularly interested in real estate investing, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video I did right here where I talk about just that.